Highly pathogenic avian influenza, sometimes known as HPAI or bird flu, is a devastating disease of domesticated poultry. Wild waterfowl are the natural host for the virus. In 2015, 50 million domesticated birds died or were euthanized due to the virus, costing the United States billions of dollars in lost revenue. Fortunately, the strains of HPAI seen recently in the United States are not the strains that harm humans. Anyone can inadvertently spread HPAI by coming into direct contact with wild waterfowl or indirectly through contaminated materials. For people who often come in contact with waterfowl or contaminated sources, such as hunters, falconers, bird watchers, and those who enjoy the outdoors, there's more risk of coming in contact with the HPAI virus. The purpose of this video is to illustrate principles that can be used to limit spreading the virus from wild waterfowl to domesticated poultry, improving biosecurity, or implementing barriers to protect poultry from disease is crucial to combating the disease. HPAI is challenging because of the extensive migration patterns of the host species, which are wild ducks and geese. These birds can harbor the virus and oftentimes do not show signs or symptoms. The virus is spread through feces, nasal secretions, and saliva, and can survive for months in cool and damp environments. Domesticated poultry can become sick by coming in contact with infected waterfowl or indirectly through virus-infected materials or environments. Historically, the virus can also sicken wild and domesticated birds of prey and songbirds. Symptoms of the disease include sudden death without signs or symptoms, coughing, sneezing, nasal discharge, lack of energy, tremors, diarrhea, and discoloration and swelling of the wattles and combs. While HPAI can be challenging to deal with, simple steps can be taken to protect domesticated poultry from contracting the disease. The term biosecurity simply refers to barriers designed to limit or stop the spread of disease from sick animals to healthy ones. In addition to preventing HPAI, these steps can protect against other poultry diseases. There are several important biosecurity principles. 1. Keep your distance. Restrict access to your property and your birds. Limit visitors with poultry from handling your birds. Be especially sure to keep your domesticated birds separated from migratory waterfowl and other wild birds. 2. Keep it clean. A number of commercial and non-commercial disinfecting products are available at stores and online. Make sure the label states that the product kills viruses and follow label directions. It's important to always remove any excess organic matter and debris from all equipment and clothing before disinfecting. Ultraviolet light and heat from the sun will also help kill the virus. 3. Don't haul disease home. In general, washing and disinfecting shoes, cars, and tires, and other equipment before returning home is important. Always change clothes after working with poultry or other birds. Discard items or equipment that cannot be disinfected or properly cleaned, such as cardboard or wooden items. 4. Don't borrow disease from your neighbor. Avoid borrowing equipment or tools from other people with poultry or those who may come in contact with wild migratory waterfowl. Waterfowl hunters should take extra precautions because of their direct contact with wild waterfowl that could be carrying the virus. Keeping equipment clean and avoiding hauling the virus home are especially important principles for waterfowl hunters. After leaving the field, clean and disinfect all clothing or equipment used. You may also consider putting your car through a car wash after hunting. If you clean and dress your carcass at home, do so in the garage or a place that can be easily cleaned. From a public health and food safety perspective, avoid dressing carcasses in the kitchen. Additionally, do not harvest, handle, or eat wild birds that are obviously sick or found dead. Keep in mind that dogs that are used to retrieve hunted waterfowl create another unique opportunity for the virus to travel home where it could possibly infect chickens or other susceptible birds. Washing your dog after hunting is a good precaution to avoid bringing contaminated material to domesticated birds. Birds of prey, also known as raptors, could be exposed to bird flu simply by sharing the same environment as wild waterfowl. People who keep and train captive raptors can also come in direct and indirect contact with wild waterfowl. Keeping your distance by separating captive raptors from migratory waterfowl by housing them appropriately is extremely important. 
Avoid decorative ponds or other features that may attract waterfowl to captive raptors. The biggest risk to captive raptors is the consumption of waterfowl that could be infected with bird flu. With bird flu now in the United States, those who handle captive raptors may need to use alternative food sources. While cooking meat before feeding to raptors thoroughly kills the virus, HPAI can survive freezing temperatures even over extended periods of time. We have had to cut down on the number of ducks and geese that we feed to the animals. We were being given uh, free donations of ducks and geese for quite a while. And as the bird flu started to find its way into Oregon and into some smaller flocks, we had to kind of step away from using that as a food source. Only use tested bird meat sources or feed other types of meat. Bird watching is a popular year-round hobby for many people that often takes place near wetlands shared by waterfowl and other wild birds. Indirect exposure to bird flu could be a potential issue. We get a number of people from the community at large that come out. Some have chickens uh, in their backyard, I'm sure. We don't really think about uh, the risk that we present to that avian, to that poultry community as something we need to take more seriously and take better care of, I think. For bird watchers, it's important to avoid hauling disease home and borrowing disease from your neighbor. After bird watching, properly wash clothes and clean or change shoes before going to any other activity. Clean any equipment used in the field, such as binoculars and tripods. Also avoid sharing equipment with others. But there are other activities where indirect exposure can occur that might surprise you. For example, you may see wild ducks or geese at the local park or at the local golf course or country club, or even while enjoying a meal at your favorite restaurant. Perhaps your occupation could expose you to an environment where infected birds recently visited. Even walking through a parking lot with contaminated material could inadvertently spread the virus to domesticated birds. For all of the scenarios and activities mentioned earlier, remember that all of the biosecurity principles need to be considered and properly applied. Remember to establish barriers to protect your birds from disease and educate others about those principles. In light of the recent bird flu situation, there are a few important things to remember. Migratory waterfowl are the natural hosts of the avian influenza virus. Practice good biosecurity techniques, that is, keep your distance, keep it clean. Don't haul disease home, and don't borrow disease from your neighbor. Additionally, learn to recognize signs of disease and report suspicious bird deaths to the appropriate agency. If you have poultry and notice symptoms indicative of bird flu, report the incident as soon as possible. If you're in Oregon, contact the Oregon Department of Agriculture using the phone number on the screen. And most importantly, if you have birds at home, keep them separated from wild birds.